hello, this is Keith from Death Dynamic Shroud, and I'm going to be looking at uh, my project file for the song Faith and Persona uh, from the album Faith and Persona. Um, and really my goal with this song and most of the album was to explore more uh, pop song structures, like first chorus, more repeating sections. Um, and yeah, with like a lot of DDS music, it's kind of a, it's kind of mixing a lot of original MIDI composition with uh, sample manipulation. Um, so let's let's listen to the beginning of the song here. So here we have um, kind of the, the base of this intro, uh, intro section is, um, is this sample from the, the JRPG uh, Skies of Arcadia. So that, that just loops um, and I, I really liked kind of the, the vibe of the string sounds there. Um, and then on top of that, I added this, uh, this bass melody. Uh, yeah, those uh, the sample combined with uh, the um, the MIDI stuff, it just felt like it was kind of one entity, <laughs> like melding together well, um, and I was into how that sounded. Um, and then yeah, you probably noticed uh, a lot of the um, the MIDI on here. I'm using. Uh, the Korg Wave Station. Um. Yeah, I use that uh, all over, all over Faith and Persona. Um, I think, I feel like I saw a meme on Reddit or something that was like, the way to make Faith and Persona is just to download the wave station and uh that's kind of <laughs> that's shockingly accurate kind of um i mean the presets on it i love um there's just a lot of great sounds um let's see what else is going on here oh yeah uh and there is this this sample kind of holding down the tempo And that, that sample is from a Jackie Chan movie, actually. Um, I won't say, I won't say the, the specific movie, but yeah, if you can find it, uh, let me know. Um, it's, it's like a, it's a 90s or like early 2000s Jackie Chan movie. Um, so let's, let's hear the second section of the song. And this this section is actually the first uh, the first part of the track that I made, um, and it really began like a lot of this a lot of the songs on this album began with just uh, like a simple rhythm something keeping time, and then I kind of play around with um, with with bass lines. So this this next section started with a bass line. 
Um, and it was the first part I made in the song, actually. <laughs> Yeah, this hearing the bass by its like soloed, it almost sounds kind of out of time. Um, I notice here that I didn't, I didn't actually like quantize the notes, um, with, which making like grid based music like this, a lot of times I do, I would quantize that. Um, but I think when it when it's heard together with the drums and everything, it kind of just locks into place um, and has like more of a a bit looser of a feel, which I think works for this track. And here we can see the drums. So, uh, yeah, pretty, I guess pretty standard drum beat, but I liked how that sounded. Um, and, you know, I'm just, um, I'm just kind of layering one shot hits here, uh, to make, to make the, the rhythm, um, like the hi-hat sound. And, uh, for the snares, I'll usually like, I'll usually search sounds and try to layer a few, a few one shot hits to like get a more interesting texture. And then I know a lot of people have asked um, about the vocals, like how I manipulate the vocal samples. Um, so we can look at that here. I think most of this song I'm using this Ariana Grande a cappella and kind of chopping it up. Let's listen to that. This hit here is, it's almost like an extra little snare, uh, but it's just a, it's just part of the vocal. And so yeah, if you've never used Ableton, um, the pitch shifting in Ableton is great. That's that's really why I'm, I use I use it now. Um, like if you go over to the envelope setting here, go to clip transposition, you can automate um, the pitch, um, which I use a lot. If I need, you know, to like really get in there and make specific notes fit with the the chords or whatever I'm using. Yeah, you can just automate. <laughs> and this is this is still kind of uh, these edits are kind of choppy, um, and sometimes I would maybe smooth those out, like fading the the edges of them. But I kind of wanted to maintain that the choppy feel um, for the, for this track. And so let's see. Like here is the un unaltered. That I need this time. And so you can see I've kind of just altered the uh, the rhythm of it. That I need this time. And um, yeah, normally I would I would bring in an acapella and kind of just listen to it and maybe like cut out little parts that. That just sounded interesting or 
that I felt like could be made into a, a different melody. You know, sometimes I, I, I even chop like this and then kind of just um, scramble them up like this <laughs> and find like a new new placement. Keeping stymie, keeping stymie. Something like that. I, yeah, I would keep working on it until it, it just felt right. Um, yeah, I think like, here are some other ideas I was playing with. <laughs> So there's just a lot, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, and sometimes it clicks into place uh, fast and sometimes it's a lot of work trying to make the, trying to like rearrange the, the vocal parts into new melodies and new vocal lines. Um, but I think here it, it clicked into place pretty quickly. Like once this part was established, um, the other parts um, came pretty naturally, even though here it's, uh, the chorus is like cut up a little bit more. Um, but let's hear, let's hear the next section. In this part, this is the chorus here. Um, I kept hearing the vocal, like it was saying, um, faith, like faith in me, um, or something about like losing or gaining your <laughs> faith in someone. And honestly, that I kind of latched onto that um, for the title because uh, it just fit with kind of themes I was already. I was already kind of planning for the, for, for the album in general. Um, and so that's kind of why I made this the title track. Um, it's because, yeah, that vocal has like a cer certain like yearning or certain like forlorn quality. Um, and then the chorus here, so I had that, the vocal part, and then it just does this 
pretty simple bass bass line underneath that with the wave station. Also, another thing I did to kind of keep up the uh, excitement between sections was kind of change the drum palette between each section. And it's, it's kind of a subtle effect, but um, I just think it helps like pop the song out a little bit, is that each section almost has its own uh, rhythmic character and its own sound palette. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> most a lot of tracks I try to like sneak in um, uh, like a one shot from like the Sophie sample pack, and in this one I'm using a, her sub bass to like to mimic that uh, wave station bass line. Um, so yeah, it's just taking a one shot and then pitch shifting it um, to match match the line And there you can hear the, the rhythm, the, the rhythm palette kind of shifting entirely for that next part. Um, yeah, there you heard some of those distorted hits that I actually didn't include in the final mix of the song. And yeah, I'm still not sure. I feel like maybe I should have <laughs> included those. Um, I just didn't know how distorted I wanted this track to be, um, but listening back with kind of those those sounds uh, soloed out, I don't know. It sounds pretty good. Um, maybe I should have kept kept that in. Um, but these sounds are, let's see. So I believe this is, what do I, oh, I've frozen these. These are pitch shifted one shots also, but I think, um, I think I got those from, yeah, from this, it's a, um, it's this synth drop from some, you know, some sample library. Um, And I kind of edited just, or just grabbed the tail of this. And then, um, like, bounced that to its own little one shot and then pitch shifted it um, to match the bass line. And, you know, just doubled it and then put some distortion in. Uh, yeah, it looks like mostly just distortion on that. But I think that it has this kind of gnarly, interesting sound. I think it turned out good. melody here 
it, it again this whole section started with just the bass so um, yeah I had that as just the bass line but then I doubled it with like some some horn sounds um, to make it kind of a kind of like a lead little melody in this in this section of the song thinking that this little chord like this gliding chord was like essential to, to this this part of the track and again yeah when I was when I was making it this part of the song um, it's it started to get like too repetitive or too stale maybe just because I had been listening to it too much and that's kind of when I went back and started to change the drum sound between each section um yeah and usually like usually halfway through a song like this or maybe in the tail end i like to add a few like um sonic surprises i guess you'd say or just like shifts in the direction or sound of the song um and i feel like and especially in these like pop style songs it just kind of pushes uh, pushes them over the edge at least for me like to my ears and just like making them <laughs> extra exciting um and yeah that's kind of what this in the next section this the purpose they serve to me um and again we have this uh this piano kind of mimicking that uh that melody that was heard in the intro as well. Um, then comes this uh, bridge or this like transition section and this I think this was the the last part of the song that I actually made, like I came in and added this after most of the rest was done, uh, because yeah, it's just needed this like last push of tension or just like excitement leading into the final chorus. Um, and basically just needed a different, another contrasting chord change, I, I felt like, because a lot of the the other chord changes in the song were kind of in the same arena, so um, I added this. Uh, the bass line is just this ascending bass line, like chromatic ascending. Um, and I, I do this, and I've done this in other tracks of mine where it just has this chromatic bass line, but then when you put other harmonies on top of it, it just creates this kind of rising tension that I really enjoy. I kind of feel like I should have turned up these uh this part here.
this was another little <clears throat> alteration of the chorus harmony. Um, like about halfway through the chorus, it starts doing this other kind of mini build. <laughs> Um, the sample here. There's there's one that is untreated, and then another that has this isotope trash distortion, which I really really love. Um, I used it kind of sparingly on Faith and Persona, but on the f the the next album I made uh, called Transcendent Spot, I kind of used it all over the place, especially with uh, with the bass. And I just think it, I just love the character of the, the sound. <laughs> also, I forgot to touch on this, um, this kind of, this layer that kind of sits over several of the sections. Um, it's that Skies of Arcadia sample again, but um, but more cut up. It's kind of subtle. Um, laying under here, but, um, let's see. Yeah, so it's, if you go into the warp mode and then you can, uh, play with these different settings. Um, if you're, if you know Ableton well, you're probably pretty familiar with this stuff. Um, but yeah, you can, you can have the, the sample trigger, um, like, at these transient points that you set, or you can have it, you know, like, you can set it to 30 second notes, and it sounds like... Or you can have it trigger based on your custom transient settings. So yeah, that, um, I'll play around with that a lot and kind of get rhythmic ideas that way. Like if you just take a sample and kind of set different transient points and then adjust the like the re essentially the release time or how fast it, the sound decays after the point, after the transient point, you can get some uh, just some interesting ideas that way. And I think that covers most of the song. Um, what's this over here? It's just uh, some chord changes I didn't end up using.
it's just fun to play around with those wave station sounds. Um, yeah, a lot of the times I'll just sit at the keyboard and kind of just improvise for a while and, you know, get chord changes and that will be the start of a track. Um, I find if I, if I find a sound I like, it's kind of like the jumping off point for uh, harmonic inspiration, really. Um, so yeah, I think that's most of it. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting, <laughs> forgetting some, but yeah, let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to touch on and maybe I'll do another video.